welcome to the 2018 Unshackler Awards. My name is Damien Ferry, the Senior Editor of The Unshackled, and we're here for the third time year in a row to present these awards to you, the people. Now, the reason why we do these awards in the first place is simply because most of the time on Australia Day, when they have their separate award every year, you get the same SJW leftist that always gets elected. And we want to change that. We want to give the people a say, a real say in who they choose to be the nominees and the award winners of these categories. So it's very, very important. We're not going to be sitting back and choosing these winners. We want you, the people, to choose them, to vote for them. We've spent now nearly two months writing up these articles and categories and you, the people, have voted. Now how it works is that we have 10 categories. Each category has 10 nominees. What I'll be doing is I'll read from the 10th to the 1st, the winner of each category, in order of the least important to the most important award, and then you will get all of the results needed. I will also be posting on the website all of the main data, all of the percentages that all the candidates have received. So, we will now start with the first of the awards, which is the 2018 Fake News of the Year Award. We had the ABC won it the last time around, so let's see how they fare this time around. Now, the nominees, Huffington Post, Junkie, SBS, Vice Media, Mamma Mia, The Guardian, Fairfax Media. Now, for the second time in the year running, the third place runner-up, BuzzFeed, with 13% of the vote. BuzzFeed is definitely um, a network um, of articles that they, that they write that are pure degenerate definitely needed to be on the top of this list because they misplaced um, and misrepresented myself a couple years ago saying that I was uh, a member of Reclaim Australia, which I wasn't, and uh, they just tend to write absolute filth. Second place, with 25% of the vote, CNN, and of course that's another network here, a TV network, that um, ridicule people on the right, um, Trump has definitely had his fair um, fight with them in the last couple of years, so definitely deserving to be on the list. And the winner of the 2018 Fake News of the Year Award, with 35% of the vote, second year running, the ABC, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Now, the ABC has programs like Q&A, The Drum, Media Watch. These programs here have not only left-wing panellists, but... Even the people that are their token right-wing panellist isn't even right-wing. For instance, they'll have a Liberal Party member on board, and they call them the right-wing panellist, but they're fairly left-wing and moderate, considering that they don't have anyone um, that is deemed uh, on the conservative side of the Liberal Party. They also uh, contain a lot of degeneracy within their articles, and there was the RN episode last year, which they um, went very heavy on the Young Nationals, the infiltration that occurred, and just tried to ridicule and um, basically dox the, the people out that, that were a part of that. So people trying to get in the political sphere, and because they've got right-wing views, they um, are deemed um, extreme and uh, are basically tortured in the media. The next award is the 2018 International Media Personality of the Year Award. Now, last time we had Milo Yiannopoulos win this award. He hasn't made the cut this time around, so we'll see who has. We have Gavin McInnes, Ross Cameron, Stefan Molyneux, Miranda Devine, Stephen Crowder, Ben Shapiro, Lauren Southern. In third place... With 11% of the vote, Alex Jones from Infowars, someone that's been on the scene for many, many years now, 
that um, many call a conspiracy theorist, but definitely gets out there and puts his views well known. So definitely someone that needs the respect um, for, for not backing down on what his views are. Second place, with 20% of the vote, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson from Fox News, of course. Someone that um, is definitely outspoken on the network and is um, very high in the ratings on Fox News. So well done to him. And the winner of the International Media Personality of the Year Award is Paul Joseph Watson with 21% of the vote, just by a couple of votes edged in front of Tucker Carlson. Now, Paul Joseph Watson is the editor of large of InfoWars, uh, 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube, someone that has obviously um, gone really hard and um, become a very um, popular alt-light figure. And he's also a member of UKIP as well, getting in the political process. So well done to uh, Paul Joseph Watson for that award win. Now, the 2018 Degenerate of the Year Award. The previous winner was Vanya Uspensky, also known as Liz Kazon. Now, they didn't make the cut this time, um, so we'll see who did. Now, Freddie Alanis, Luke Foley, CJ Palmer, Merja Mahaney, Evie Amadi, transgender ex um, assaulter, Father Philip Murphy, Daniel Dandyman Aldica. In third place, with 15% of the vote, Stormy Daniels. Obviously, everybody knows Stormy to be the porn star that is involved in the, the Trump fiasco. A lot of legal battles there, trying to um, destroy Trump's uh, uh, image, even though it hasn't worked. So, um, what can I say? You know, I mean, definitely someone worthy of Degenerate of the Year award. In second place, Tom Rao with 16% of the vote. Now, Tom Rao is a very extreme green. He's still running for him in Summerhill. And the funny thing is they have not disendorsed him. And he has made comments that has supported necrophilia and also bestiality, saying that it doesn't bother anybody and that it shouldn't be something that is illegal. So definitely a degenerate and someone that should be disendorsed from the Greens, and it's, it's quite sad that they go very hard on nationalists, yet they let people like this loose. So it definitely tells you what kind of agenda these people have. Now, the winner of the Degenerate of the Year Award 2018 goes to, with 30% of the vote, Tom Bollard. Tom Bollard is, well was, the host of Tonightly before it got axed due to low ratings. He's also called conservatives very obscenity, um, words of obscenities. Um, so, you know, like really, really dirty words he used on his show to describe different conservatives. And um, just a degenerate in general. Um, you know, I mean, this guy here, um, he's um, basically gone out on his show and he, he, he made a big support of uh, Dandy Man when he was um, um, with a fiasco with Blair Cottrell, obviously, in Melbourne. And his show was just absolute filth, really. I mean, it was trying to be funny, and it definitely wasn't. So, um, I mean, someone definitely worthy of this award win, that's for sure. Next, we have the 2018 Culture Warrior of the Year Award. So, the Culture Warrior of the Year Award last time was Sam Hyde, and he hasn't made it this time on the list, so we'll see who has. So, we have Eliahi Priest, Dave Palau, Mariki Rancy, Lyle Shelton, Bill Muhlenberg, Kira Lee Smith, Sydney Watson. In third place, with 12% of the vote, Bettina Arndt. Now, Bettina Arndt is definitely someone that deserves to be on this list, someone that scored highly, someone that has for many, many years been a men's rights activist, has gone out there and defended people like you and me. So gone out there and definitely um, spoke a bit about the hypocrisy that feminism is. So someone that has really helped our cause. In second place, with 25% of the vote, Bernard Gaynor. A conservative Catholic, someone that has been on the scene for many years, been a, um, a candidate in the Senate before, um, hasn't successfully gotten in, 
but someone that has always voiced their opinions, has his own website. So he's, he's always been there, he's always going to be there, and someone that we should definitely watch out for in future. And the winner of the 2018 Culture Warrior of the Year Award goes to Daisy Cousins with 39%. Definitely wrong time in there. Now, Daisy Cousins is an anti-feminist vlogger. She's, um, on many occasions, challenged Clementine Ford. Definitely had great battles with her and just highlighted the hypocrisy that feminism is. And um, she's also a, a weekly a weekly guest on The Bolt Report and on Sky News. So she's really um, gone far. She has really uh, performed well in a role as an activist, as um, someone that's um, got conservative and libertarian leanings. So someone to definitely watch out for in the future. The next award is the 2018 Triggered Feminist of the Year Award. So, last time around, we had uh, Sarah Hansen Young. She was the winner of this award last time around. And Clementine Ford came in second place just narrowly. So we'll see how both of them fare in this um, battle here. So we had Jacinda Ardern, Jodie Lee, Laura Jays, Vanessa Van, Van Badham, Julie Bishop, Julia Banks. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now in third place, on 5% of the vote, we've got Kathy Newman. Someone that definitely needs to be on this list. Now in second place, once again, 25% of the vote, Clementine Ford. So just narrowly missed out on that first ranking. Um, this time around, though, it wasn't as close as last time with the votes. So in first place... And none other than Sarah Hansen Young on 51% of the vote. So definitely someone that everybody uh, has a disliking for and definitely deserves to be on this list. I mean, um, she has um, just romped home in this award and gone further ahead of Clementine Ford this time. So, um, I mean, the amount of crying she does, the anti-white propaganda, complaining that it's not, uh, you know, the, the it's okay to be white uh, slogan was, was racist. I mean, um, anti-male, you know, um, going hard against white men, you know, it was the works, you know, someone that definitely deserves to be the winner of this award. So that's Shy, Sarah Hansen Young, the winner. In the next award, it's the 2018 Cis White Male of the Year Award. So this kind of award is for people that are, are tough, people that really get out there and have a, have a, a very masculine image. Corey Bernardi was a past winner two years ago, so we'll see how he fares. We've got a, a new list of candidates, so um, let's see who's on the list. Barry O'Sullivan, Mike Pence, Boris Johnson, Brett Kavanagh, David Lionhelm, Peter Dutton, Tony Abbott. In third place, with 9% of the vote, Dr Jordan B. Peterson. Someone that definitely has a, a masculine image, goes hard, and um, has very strong principles. So well done to uh, Jordan Peterson to be on here. In second place, 11%, Corey Bernardi. So Corey, obviously, um, a winner two years ago, but this time, second place. So uh, missed out just. Now, the winner of the 2018 Cis White Male of the Year Award... With 53% of the vote, a massive vote, goes to Tommy Robinson. Now, Tommy Robinson was sent to jail for 13 months in May. He was then um, uh, released in August. This was obviously um, in regards to um, being in contempt of court for filming um, outside a rape gang trial. He's also uh, recently joined, joined UKIP. So trying to get political and get back up there and um, continue to uh, be a, a great activist. So well done to him. The next award on the list is the 2018 International Cuck of the Year Award. Now, 
This one here, the last two years running, Justin Trudeau has won. So let's see how he fares in this time. Craig Emerson, Michael McCormick, Carl Stefanovic, Darren Hinch, Bob Catter. That's due to the Annings uh, saga that um, he fired um, because he was too extreme. Paul Whittaker, Emmanuel Macron. In third place, with 13% of the vote, Bill Shorten. Someone that definitely deserves to be on here and has always been a top three uh, finalist. Bill Shorten continues to cave into the Greens rather than stand by his working class base. So he's somebody that has always been a cuck, that never has principles and sticks by him, and just does whatever will get him re-elected. Backstab two Prime Ministers, just doesn't care about anyone but, he, but his own career. Now, in second place, with 22% of the vote, Richard Di Natale. I mean, he definitely deserves to be on there too, and that's for the obvious reasons, like Bill Shorten. Someone that just doesn't care about the truth, just continues to um, go on these propagandas against Australia Day, against, you know, um, um, being okay to be white, um, you know, continuing to promote degeneracy. So, Richard Di Natale definitely deserves to be in this award list. And the winner, free time winner, I should say, of the International Cuck of the Year Award 2018, Justin Trudeau with 33%. He always is a favourite in this award and he's always won it. So no one can come close to him. Um, he obviously was born a cuck, considering that um, he was an illegitimate son um, with his mum and Castro. Um, also, he said quotes such as, if you kill your enemy, they win. Who would have thought that your enemy wins if they're dead? So, I mean, unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, and the amount of degeneracy that he's put into Canada and um, immigration-wise, importing a lot of immigrants, it's, um, he's definitely trashed the place, that's for sure. The 2018 Unshackler of the Year Award. Now... The previous two times, Donald Trump won this award, so we'll see how he fares here. We have Gerard Baden, Sebastian Kurz, Rodrigo Duterte, Jair Bolsonaro, Vladimir Putin, Matteo Salvini, Pauline Hansen. And in third place, none other than Hungarian leader Viktor Orban, with 9% of the vote. Someone that is a real standout in Europe. Um, a real leader that's definitely taken a nationalist approach. Has said no to immigration. Has tried to stick to traditional family values. And in turn has created a great country out of that. So well done to him. Second. Second place runner-up Donald Trump. With 32% of the vote. So, I mean, Donald Trump being the winner the last two times around, didn't get there this time. Someone edged in front of him. So, who was it? The winner of the 2018 Unshackler of the Year Award is none other than Fraser Anning. Now, Fraser Anning is very deserving of this award. He is someone that has worked very, very hard. He made an impact on his maiden speech. He's someone that um, attends rallies constantly. So he's there with the people trying to uh, push a certain agenda out there in the public sphere. And he's um, built his own new party and also put out a platform, and a platform that I must say is really good. A really strong platform for, for nationalist principles. Um, he's someone that wants predominantly white immigration which is really where it should be at. I mean, why would you want to continue to import people with different views and different outlook on life to you? They come here and they absolutely trash the place. You'd want people aligned to your set of beliefs, to your values, to your culture, your traditions, to everything, your ethnic makeup, I mean, your, your faith. Everything is so important here and it's at stake because our demographics continue to get slowly, slowly changed. And, I mean, in these countries, these third world countries, they definitely wouldn't allow it, so why should we? He also wants to get rid of usury, which is really important. He wants to create a, uh, a non-for-profit bank, national bank, 
I mean, this is something we used to have. And ever, ever since that, that got privatised, I mean, this country has really suffered. You know, I mean, it's, um, it's just got, you just look at how the economy has gone in that time. I mean, you know, cost of living going up, everything's really hard, you know, much, much harder than it used to be. So Fraser Ranning is definitely someone that is on the scene making an impact and good luck to him and well done for him to come first in the Unshackler of the Year Award, 2018. The 2018 Australian Patriot of the Year Award. Now this is a favourite. This is something that normally gets the most votes. In this case it actually got way over 2,000 votes. And um, just you really, when, when it comes to the other awards, this one is just a standout, absolute standout. Now, um, we've had previous winners such as Blair Cottrell in 2016. Last year, we had Christopher Shortus win the award. We'll see how he fares now. So we've got people like Mitch Van Dam, the young conservative, Dan Evans, Sherman Burgess, Tom Sewell. John Bolton, RV Yemeni. In third place, with 5% of the vote, Blair Cottrell, which is the 2016 winner. Now Blair is uh, working hard and um, doing a lot of work with LAD Society, so he's definitely um, also speaking at a lot of rallies. And um, someone that is very well known. He um, had that interview with Sky and then, then got really, um, you know, they ended up taking the program down because of it, um, and he didn't even he didn't even say anything really extreme. That's the funny thing about it. It was it was a very you know um, professional um, interview that was conducted. Yet um, they came out you know basically calling him a Nazi for it, which is you know something that happens very often here. You know people with with right of centre views automatically get ostracised for those views. In second place, with 40%, Neil Erickson, someone um, from Cook's Convicts that has been on the scene for many years now, originally with UPF, someone that has um, attended many rallies, done a lot of videos, and gets his face out there. Now, the, the second and first um, uh, places were a dead heat. There was about 100 votes difference in them, um, which leads me to the winner. The winner of the 2018 Australian Patriot of the Year Award goes to, once again, Christopher Shortus with 44% of the vote. So, performed really well, really, really well here. And um, Christopher Shortus is a member of the Australia First Party. He also writes for the UNA blog. He's a nativist, a strong nationalist with traditionalist view, uh, views. He's a Christian, a family man with kids. He was um, someone that used to be in the UPF, of course. He was a member of the Bendigo Free. He's very outspoken and very... He's just somebody that never never plays this normie game that you get with a lot of people. I mean, you, you get a lot of people these days that just want to stick to the easy way. They just want to stick to whatever... Whatever gets their name out there, whatever's considered popular and accepted, whereas he goes deep. He goes into issues that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And this is something that you have to admire about him. Because not many people are willing to touch this stuff. Anybody that is willing to talk about things that are deemed unacceptable and deemed not worthy of being mentioned has to be praised. I mean, because it's something that isn't done often and it's really important and something we need to do. We need to challenge the, the norm. That's what we need to do and this is what he's doing. He's also going to get a, a, a law degree at uni, which is um, really trying to step up his credentials here, so then maybe in the future he can run for parliament. So he's definitely going out there and putting his name out there and, you know, trying to basically make, make a good impact on society and, and on his own life. So well done to Christopher Shortus for winning this award. This leads us to the last award, the 2018 Australian Regressive of the Year Award. Another favourite that uh, likes to get a lot of attention, this award here. So the previous, um, the previous winner was uh, Daniel Andrews. 
Daniel Andrews, the previous winner. Let's see how he fares here. So, um, we have Tarnine Onus Williams, Slack Bastard, also known as Andy Fleming, Stephen Jolly, Peter Grace, Yasmin Abdul Magid, Waleed Ali, which was a uh, winner in 2016, the Faruqi family, Christopher Pine, the fixer, comes in at number three with 13% of the vote. Now, he was also a runner-up in this, um, the last year running, so he's always up there, but just slightly misses out on top spot. The Fixer, obviously, someone at the left of the Liberal Party, very outspoken, uh, big supporter of Malcolm Turnbull, very critical of the conservative um, uh, people and the, and the beliefs that go around in the, in the, in the Liberal Party, so someone that uh, is definitely regressive. He's, de he's definitely one of the wets that get out there and um, try and uh, challenge you know, what you would think the Liberal Party stands for, you know, continue to drag it to the left, especially on social issues, um, gay marriage, for instance, um, all of those sort of um, positions that the Liberal Party used to stand strong um, against, he's definitely tilted that and made an impact on that, so he definitely should, should stay in this award and, and, and be a, a clear runner for the title. In second place, with 17% of the vote, Malcolm Turnbull, XPM, and obviously someone I was mentioning before regarding the Pine Connection there. Um, really the, the most left-leaning liberal I've ever seen run the party, apart from perhaps maybe someone like Hughes and Malcolm Fraser, which uh, never ended up performing well in, in, in party life. I mean, every time that the Liberal Party ended up selecting a left-wing leader, they either lost elections or they only just scraped in. They never really performed well. Um, unlike when they had strong conservative leaders. So this is the thing. I mean, you know, people, the base, want a particular somebody that holds those principles. And these guys don't hold them. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, that's why they belong on this list. They're definitely regressives. The winner, once again, on 24% of the vote, Daniel Andrews. Daniel Andrews from Sa uh, the Safe Schools Man, that's definitely um, indoctrinated education systems. He's promoted the LGBT agenda, pumping money, heaps and heaps of money into it. Um, Sudanese gangs running riot, and all he can say is that the, the problem is, is our, um, our racist white Australians that don't give them a fair go. I mean, tell that to all the shop owners that are getting robbed. People beaten down the street. They can't even go out for dinner. I mean, this is a real, real problem here. The immigration problem, the the the, the, the socialist state of Melbourne that is really um, running here. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And he got elected again. How did he get elected again? I mean, it's not so much because people regard him as a great leader, but because the liberal leader was so piss weak that people wanted a real leader to replace Daniel Andrews, and they didn't have that. So they selected the devil they knew rather than the, the, the devil they didn't. I mean, Matt Guy wasn't anyone special. He wasn't anyone that had strong conservative nationalistic principles. So he was um, just going to be a light version of Daniel Andrews. And people don't want that. People want a difference. People want someone that is going to come up to Andrews and, and you know, call his uh, perversion out. Call his um, safe school system out. Go hard on the immigration issue. Not someone that plays the normie role. Not somebody that just wants to do things easy. You know, you have to go hard. When you go hard, you end up winning elections. I mean, they're the 10 awards that we had um, in this list. And it was such a great list with different nominees to last time. Um, one thing that I have to do is thank everybody for tuning in. I'm going to be having um, all of the awards in percentage orders all listed on the website tonight. So make sure you tune in to our website. And um, I hope you had a great time on Australia Day, not Invasion Day. Hope you had a fun family day out. And that you continue to fight for our day to stay on the 26th because it's really important for our, uh, our, our Australian identity. You know, we really need this. We really have to stop the forces that try to destroy us and divide us. So tune in to our channel. Make sure that you look at the results. 
and we hope to see you again in uh, 2019 awards, which would be early 2020. So in another year's time, we'll see you then. Goodbye.